Hello folks, uh, let's have a little update on the uh, motive power situation. Uh, in the last video I talked about uh, considering electric uh, and uh, glow uh, engine and I happen to, happen to have this uh, electric motor and I knew very little about it and thanks to some ip input from um, people who viewed the video I think we've worked out that actually this motor would actually do the job it's a, roughly equivalent to a, um, a 30 or a 5cc glue engine um, so it would be up to, up to up to the job on 3s uh, and somebody suggested it might even be capable of operating on 4s so making a plate for here is a real option however i've just taken this engine out of uh, the plane that i had it in that basically i'm going to strip down and it's a sato which obviously is a mark of quality they're lovely engines these i thought the bearings might be an issue i'm not so sure now to be honest with you uh, one curious thing i've tried to get this off and it's, it's not budging but there's a plate that goes here which came off due to the oil and the plate says uh 40 well actually let's get it so here we go I'm not sure if this is going to show up. That says 40 special. And it was glued onto the uh, engine case. But when you look closely at what's underneath, it says FA45. So I'm assuming that this was a universal case that was used for a, a, a number of models. So whether it's a 40 or a 45, I suspect with that plate it's a 40, that's going to be perfect for this model. And the other thing I like about it, apart from the fact it's a Sato, is I think this would look gorgeous in a vintage plane. And although the plans have the engine mounted inverted, it's too pretty to be hidden. I think I would mount it like that. It would also make it easy to interchange and uh, on a plate to lift the whole plate out from bearing guides to actually run an electric motor if I wish to do so. But I think that stuck out front would look the bee's knees. Uh, the next thing I'm going to do is put it in a stand and try it out. And when I've done that, uh, perhaps we'll stick that on as a little insert. I'll make a decision on the next step that I'm going to take with this motor. Uh, do I use it or do I stick with the electric first? I'm not sure. But if this runs sweet, I think this is going into the model. It's more in keeping with a vintage uh, design anyway. Let's try it out. As you can see, I'm indoors, which isn't ideal. However, I'm full of cold. It's grim outside. Uh, and I want to really try this engine out. Um, for obvious reasons, I won't run it for very long. If it runs, if I can get it started, uh, I just want to see if it's got some potential. Let's take a bit of fuel through. Um, I need a new bung for the starter. I might have to try and start it by hand. We'll see. Try it with a glove first. I think we need a bit of pressure on. That's better. Mm. Well, 
it obviously I think it needs the needle out of touch uh, and I couldn't do both at the same time let's try again Got a kick there. Let's try the starter, if it will work this. Well, I think you can tell from that video, I'm really excited at the prospect of using this C2 engine as the motive power for this build. Um, I haven't given up on the electric motor. In fact, I'm going to try and incorporate a, a method that allows me to easily interchange them right from the start. Uh, it turns out that this is about the capacity of a 30 two stroke um, which I think will be perfect for this model so I'm going to actually um, set this up I hope so that it's very easy to interchange between the two that being said there's a little bit more thought required whoops there's a little bit more thought required for setting up the Sato engine so I'm going to start with the uh, glue engine setup and see if it, I can easily adapt it for the electric motor. So that, that ran really, really well. The only thing I have to sort out is that's stripped the internal hole on the Allen key, so I can't get that off at the moment. Hopefully a bit of heat and maybe some mole clamps on the outer head, and I'll be able to free that bolt and then replace it with a new one. This was for a remote driver for the glue in the other model it was in. But that runs really, really well, and I'm, I couldn't be happier with it. I'm really, really very pleased with it. I am very, very tempted, as I think I've already mentioned, not to mount it inverted as it's shown on the plan. Rather, I'd like to have it in the upright position. It's far easier messing around with glow leads and so on. Uh, and I just think that looks so sweet, and it'll really look the part... We just tilt it a little, sorry. That'll really look the part on a, a vintage model with the, that um, iconic valve cover arrangement for the seat was sticking out the top. And I think that's the sort of position it would come out as. So I think that'll look really nice. I'd mount the um, exhaust, what there is of it here, in a downward position. I have other exhausts actually, but... I might just stick with something as simple as that. Anyway, what do I need to do? Well, the first thing is, I think Dick was try was intending on using a commercial um, engine mount that he would simply bolt on the front here because he hasn't followed the plans, not for the first time. If I show you what they 
actually have on them. This bearing, there are two of them, quarter inch in size, uh, in thickness rather, they go there into the side. And a plate is mounted on top of these, screwed into them, uh, um, a piece of angle, I think, is used and the motor can then be mounted directly on top. Now that might really lend itself to an electric setup where I would simply unbolt the engine from these side mounts and then be able to uh, put the electric motor directly in onto a plate at the back that I could bolt onto the back. That's what I'm thinking of at the moment. So the first thing to do will be to get these plates which have I just tilt a bit you can see they go there uh, spreading the stress between the front and through the bulkhead but if we notice Dick hasn't cut any apertures for them so the first task I have to do is to cut out a relevant slot from each side so that these can slide through and then they'll need to be mounted on the inside and supported on the inside. There's a um, a hardwood bearer to help support that as well. So I want to do a bit of chain drilling here and here. I'll show you what I'm up to when I'm partway through and then we'll have a look at how these are going to be mounted onto this uh, firewall. Well, unfortunately, to get the thrust line in the correct position the engine will have to be mounted inverted uh, which is a shame but to turn it round the other way if I just show you it's going to look ridiculous um, so it's going to have to be inverted um, you can see I've marked on the position of the bearers and there'll be an aluminium uh, right angle plate bolted onto these and then <clears throat> um, the engine can be mounted directly on the aluminium plate with some lock locking nuts. So that's the way I'm going to have to go. I'll chain drill this out and then come back when I'm ready to actually bolt everything or glue everything in place. There we go. That's one bearer cut and in place. One minor accident in the process. I've still got all my fingers, but I'm minus one of the horns here i slipped and smashed it off so there'll be no double pull system it'll be a boarden cable onto this side unfortunately but you know these things happen and internally there's a block I'm trying to do this one-handed a block that is glued and bolted onto that back wall so this will be quite a strong structure and it's incorporated into the cheeks that go on the side. So I need to cut out the other side. And then we're part of the way there. Onwards and upwards. Overnight, this has been allowed to dry. And the bearers are now in place. Uh, glued, epoxied. And there's, you can see inside here, there's a hardwood cross piece to bind the bearers to one another but also to bind the whole uh, kit and caboodle shall we, shall we say to the bulkhead i've also cut out some aluminium parts hardened aluminium and they'll become the engine bearers i've had to do a little bit of machining on them to get them to uh, the spacing to fit i might even take a little bit more off so they'll fit on like that obviously bolted on I've also taken the cheeks and I've machined out the interior so that they can now pop on the holes on the outside were doors that I used to hold things in place while it was being machined they'll be filled with uh, some ball sand then it'll all be sanded down now there's obviously a big lump of wood there that needs uh, lots of material removed 
and there's room for um, a cap to go on the top. Um, that I might take that down a little bit more, might work better that way. And if we offer up the engine, obviously this is going to be in the way, so holes, holes will have to be drilled through it, but the engine, take these back off temporarily, the engine will fit in inverted like that. Now, I have also been thinking, I haven't forgotten about the electric motor. I have to drill, obviously, holes in here to take the the uh, engine lug uh, bolts. But I'm also thinking that there may be a way of inserting the electric motor. They may need to be removed. I've just realised that. So maybe that's not going to work as easily as I thought. Never mind. Well, here we go. <clears throat> These plywood bearings are, have been glued in place. There's a cross piece inside. Hardwood that binds the bearings to the firewall or the bulkhead. And this is the solution I've come up with to allow me to interchange between um, electric and this four-stroke engine. So what you can see, I've put some T-nuts through here and they will support aluminium brackets, which will in turn be drilled to take the engine and support the engine like that. And it also means I can unscrew the brackets because these T-nuts will hold uh, in place. And there's room to put an electric motor in between the two um, plywood plates. I'll have to make some sort of um, back plate for this to be screwed to. And that can be bolted on uh, using T-nuts again. And that way I'll be able to swap from one to the other. At least that's the theory. I think it'll work. And I've got here the side cheeks, which I've actually cut out, and they neatly press on. I'll apply some glue, and I'll glue this one on. And then I've simply got a box around to make it obviously the shape that I desire. I think that's going to be rather neat. So... Coffee time now. I'll put some glue on, get these glued in place, and then we'll come back and look at uh, how it's all going to work out. Well, folks, I'm rather pleased with that. I think it's worked out well. That's just a cat going crazy in the background playing with a bag. Um, aluminium angle in place. I haven't drilled it through yet for the engine, but that's a, a minor job. Um, it's bolted and secured onto the frames, the bearers, which are mounted in these blocks. That means I can remove these aluminium plates, and if I wish to do so, I can use an electric motor. I simply need to make a mounting block uh, that would be uh, screwed and bolted on in a similar manner with T-nuts onto the firewall. So I could interchange if I wish to do so. And I think that's an interesting option to have. There's one last thing, and that is, do I invert the engine, which is what I was intending on doing, and although I dismissed it, I could put the engine like that. And I must admit, I really do like the look of the engine sticking out through the top. Uh, it just adds to the vintage feel. Um, I'm open to suggestions. What do you think? Inverted or upright? Let me know in the comments, please. Give the video a thumbs up if you don't mind. And get out flying if you can. At the minute in the northeast of England, that's not much of an option. If you can't get flying, then we get creative. Bye now.